Мне голос был. Он звал утешно. Он говорил. I heard a voice. It called, consoling. It said to me, come hither now. Abandon your forsaken sinful land. Abandon Russia. Leave forever. And from your hands I'll wash the blood. I'll draw the black shame from your heart. And with a new name I will cloak the wounds of misery and loss. But I, dispassionate and calm, concealed my ears beneath my hands to hinder this unworthy speech from soiling my mournful soul. Daniel gave this to me on our wedding day. I've no idea what it must have cost him. It looks just like the one the Tsarina wears. So naturally I don't wear it now. Might give people the wrong idea. I don't even want to touch it. It's only designed for one thing, and I hope I never have to use it. I miss Daniel sleeping next to me. It feels cold without him. Sonia keeps me up sometimes. She has nightmares, especially if there are any loud noises nearby. She keeps asking when Daddy is coming back. It makes me sad. It's not much, but it's home. We're lucky. In the cities, two or three families have to share rooms like this with only straw partitions for privacy. I hope it'll be safer here. is still rationed, but we're growing some vegetables in the hope we can be self-sufficient. Gardening makes me feel better. Sometimes when the sun is shining, we can almost forget. The situation in Petrograd is such that a ministry of the Duma would now be powerless to do anything, for it has to contend with the Social Democratic Party, represented by the Workers' Committee. In order to save Russia and keep the army at the front quiet, the Tsar has been advised to abdicate. The attitude of the armies at the front in the face of the new development is not yet known in Petrograd. It is generally believed that the appointment of Grand Duke Nicholas as Commander-in-Chief will be received enthusiastically by the troops, with whom he is extremely popular. The abdication of Emperor Nicholas was signed at the town of Pakov, where the train on which he was travelling toward Petrograd was halted early in the week. It is said that he had arrived on Wednesday at a point close to Petrograd, and then turned back towards Pakov, but this report has not been confirmed. I've got to go and vote, but I'm scared. It's all over social media and the TV, demonstrations and riots everywhere. I don't think I can get to the polling station without being caught up in it. And Danny hasn't called. I guess every police officer available will be kept on shift until things settle down. If they ever do. Sarah, it's Mum. Are you all right? We've been watching the telly. It's Danny on duty. Someone's just shot a policeman. It's like that Keith Palmer thing all over again. Have you voted? I think they've taken Mrs. May away from Downing Street. They're that worried about her. I know you don't care, but... Oh, just please call. Dad and I are sick with worry.
Danny's mum gave this to me when she realised we were going to be a serious thing. I love it. It's antique. Belonged to her grandmother who survived the Russian Revolution. I'm keeping it for our daughter. Another of Danny's police-oriented ideas. Why do we even have to have it in the house? This isn't America. Violent clashes have erupted all over London as polls open. As in Paris last month, scores of protesters have taken to the streets, claiming that there is no choice in the main political parties. Reports of clashes between would-be voters and self-proclaimed anarchists have been coming in from polling stations closest to Trafalgar Square. Our Home Affairs correspondent Joe Lawrence is at the scene. Joe. Yes, Paul. The mood here is increasingly threatening. Many of the demonstrators have been jeering at people trying to reach the polling stations, accusing them of capitulating to right-wing terrorists and letting the establishment ride roughshod over the will of the people. Some stones have been thrown and riot police are standing by, but so far there has been no... Oh, wait. I see flames. Someone has thrown a torch. This is turning nasty. We should never argue in bed. I couldn't sleep last night. Danny thinks it won't make any difference who gets in. We should be worried about the crazies who drive trucks into crowds and knife police officers. I think we should use our vote. It took women long enough to get it after all. Danny loves this painting because he says it's exuberant. To me, it just represents all the chaos and confusion that seems to be invading our lives these days. I am so hungry. I wish I'd rationed the last of the potatoes from the patch. Danny should be here any minute, if he hasn't been stopped. I've packed like he told me. Oh, I hope we can get away. I'm taking this with me no matter what Danny says. I know I should have handed it in when the revenue police came round, but it's been in our family for seven generations.
I don't know when I'll next have a bed to sleep in. At least we're taking sleeping bags. What else did Annie say to pack? Auto lantern, fake IDs, medipack, suicide pill, gun. Scientists and activists have been saying for years that the levels of consumption of energy, food and water seen over the last century have been unsustainable. Now we're in a position where there's barely enough to go around, and what is available is being controlled by the elite few, and they aren't hesitating to use violence. We must act now to fight for humanity and put a stop to this dystopian nightmare. I never thought I'd actually be in a situation where I might have to use this. I guess we all just got complacent. That's what happens when you leave things for the next generation to fix. It's truly come back and bitten us. This is our last broadcast. We are running on our backup generators, which have limited power left. So we will last 20 more minutes at most. The three big global corporations are bottlenecking the world's resources in an attempt to starve off the ordinary people and return the world population to a sustainable number. Famine is rampant, and if people aren't dying of thirst or hunger, they're dying from the inability to keep warm or from disease, which is spreading rapidly. Stay indoors if you can, and stockpile any food, water, and medical supplies you can scavenge before they're reclaimed by the big three. It's a tough time ahead, and it is expected only half the population will make it through. AI drone soldiers are being deployed worldwide on a manhunt for people with class rank 2 and under. To those whom it may concern, I'm afraid you might not survive the night. If we could overthrow the Big Three, what would happen next? Who would ration out the resources? How would we fix the population crisis and restore order? Would a new war break out? The cycle just goes on and on. What's that? Who's there? Danny, is that you? Oh, they've come. What am I going to do? I've got to get away. Oh, help! 